Hello there, I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and welcome to another episode of my vlog. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about digital sculpting. You're all familiar with digital painting, I'm sure, but did you know that you can sculpt digitally using your Wacom tablet? Well, you can. And you're probably wondering what this program I'm using is here. Is it a $700 program like ZBrush? No, it's free, and it's online, and you don't even have to install it. Just go and do a search for Sculpt GL, and this is a WebGL program, which means it runs off of the internet. You don't have to install anything. As long as you have a pretty decent computer and a 3D card, this should work. And you can go ahead and start sculpting. Now, I'm not going to make this a tutorial. I might make a tutorial on how to use this later. But to be perfectly honest, I am not a 3D artist. I can kind of dabble in it a little bit, and I can get by doing some things here and there that are experimental. But I don't think I'm really confident doing it professionally. So... You might think that that sounds really stupid watching me paint this face here, but you'll see that, you know, I can kind of get by, but am I doing this the professional way, the most e efficient way, or a way that's going to yield some kind of model that could actually be used in a video game? I don't know. This could end up looking really cool, but it might not be able to be used in a game or for any other purpose because it's just not a technically good model. So you really have to know what you're doing besides just being able to draw or sculpt which brings me to a question that i had recently somebody asked do you have to be able to draw to be able to be a digital sculptor or a 3d artist and i'm not really sure about that i don't think it hurts to really try both and really you can learn a lot from drawing two-dimensionally and you can learn just as much from drawing three-dimensionally like you would do here i think if you do both you'll have insight into both worlds and that'll just set you up better for being able to be a better artist overall. Now I can kind of dabble in this and I know what I'm doing because I know human anatomy pretty well and I've drawn a lot of faces two-dimensionally which makes it so that I have some idea of what to do three-dimensionally and after I'm done experimenting with this three-dimensional model it may give me some insight into drawing two-dimensionally. So really like whether or not you're animating or making 3D models or drawing two-dimensionally doesn't really matter which one you do but I recommend that you experiment with a little bit of everything and I think that'll really help give you some insight. So you can see I'm really struggling with the ears here again I don't have any idea what I'm doing but you can see that this program is actually really super easy to use for anybody I mean, you don't really have to know much about it there's a limited set of features there's basically a bunch of brushes that say what they're going to do. You can pull the clay, you can crease the clay, you can smooth it, you can add clay, you can subtract clay, and so on. You can control the intensity of the brush. Your Wacom tablet pen pressure will make your line thicker or thinner, kind of like it would with a 2D brush. And you can control the opacity and intensity of effects too. It's actually a pretty cool program. And when you're done with this, you can save this as a file that you can import or export you could export it as an OBJ file and you could bring it into Maya or Blender, ZBrush, Poser, anything you want. You could bring it into Photoshop even and then you could render it out there, you could animate it, you could add textures to it, you could sculpt it more, you could color it. There are some basic coloring features in Sculpt GL. You can see that I can add a shiny material for the eyes and for the lips and I can make this humanoid alien look a little more realistic just by adding some flesh color to it. Now, can you use this professionally? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a professional 3D artist, but from what I've done here, I could imagine somebody who knows 3D sculpting a little better could make something pretty dang cool with this program. And since you can export it as an OBJ and bring it into any other 3D program, I don't see why you couldn't use this for professional work. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm bringing it into Poser, and I'm adding a texture, and then I'm rendering it out with this copper texture here. I'll try a glass texture next, and we'll see how that looks. I'll go ahead and render it out with Poser. And once we have this render, we basically have an image that we can then bring into like Photoshop or Corel Painter if we want, and we can add to it. So I'm going to bring it into Painter and give it kind of a pink background and make it glow a little bit. And you can see we have this kind of cool glass head thing. So I recommend that you check this website out. It's a pretty cool feature. There's also a lot of more advanced programs out there like ZBrush and Maya and Mudbox that you could use to do basically the same thing here. But this is a free program, so it's worth a try. So that's it for this episode of my vlog. I hope you'll join me every Monday for a new episode. And don't forget to click that subscribe button if you want to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.